about. We're going to ask Earl Blumenauer and Ron Wyden to take a breath to have that.
Ready to get the second half of the rally started? Yeah. 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 <laughs> My name is Brenda C. Fuentes. I'm a J with J staff person. I also help with the Economic Crisis Committee. Um, we're really excited that you all stayed through the march, even though it was raining. That just shows us how strong Oregonians we are. And we won't stop until we get what we want. Nothing stopping us. Um, we have a couple of speakers lined up to talk to talk to everyone and address the issues that we're currently facing. Um, first speaker we have right now is Ron Williams, is the Executive Director of Oregon Action, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the social security cuts that we keep hearing about and how that's going to affect our community and why we need to stop them. What a great rally, huh? Yeah. What a great march, huh? Yeah. Well, folks, you're doing a great job out there. Thanks for joining us in this wonderful Oregon sunshine. And I've just got a few remarks that I'm just going to make shortly here. Um, it's important that people understand that in terms of Social Security, Social Security provides benefits in Oregon to over 650,000 people. Did you know that? No. no. That's an important thing to keep in mind. It's also important to keep in mind that Social Security lifts about 273 Oregonians out of 273,000 Oregonians out of poverty. And that's an important point. Oregon residents that receive Social Security benefits, or the benefits they receive, total over $8.6 billion a year, which amounts to about 5% of Oregon's annual GDP. Do you think the impact of that would be felt across the state? Yes. Absolutely. So we've got some messages, and the messages are, keep your hands off our Social Security. No cuts, period. That means no raising the retirement age, messing with how benefits are calculated, and no privatization. Social Security belongs to the people who worked hard all their lives and contributed to the program. It's, a, it's based on a promise that if you pay in, then you ought to earn the right to benefits. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Social Security did not cause the federal deficit. Today it has a more than $2.5 billion surplus. And we don't want to mess with that. Yeah. Right? That's right. So we want Hands folks to, to, to keep, keep that in mind as you go and you consider who you're going to be voting for because we want to make sure that the people that we're putting in office are supporting Social Security and protecting Social Security, not just the status quo, not moving backwards, no cuts, no how, no way. Okay, the next person we have is Lise Brown, who is currently an unemployed worker and or is organizing vigils in front of the City Hall on Wednesdays. If you have a chance to come out Wednesdays at noon in front of City Hall, um, it doesn't matter if you're unemployed or employed, just take some time out and support. And remember that we all need to make sure that our fellow people have jobs. I've been a stay-at-home mom for several years and I've been looking for work for almost two years. Mothers face tough choices after they have children. Federal family leave laws are for, are for unpaid leave and only up to 12 weeks, so most employers don't offer paid leave. Therefore, it's a financial or psychological hardship just to have children in this country. If you take the leave without pay, your family loses wealth. And if you go right back to work, you need a psychologist to deal with your guilt. I started looking for work in 2008 right after the Republicans and corporate Democrats ruined the economy. I'm a, I'm a Democrat, but this election season I don't want to vote for a corporate Democrats who give welfare to the rich and to big corporations. I want to vote for progressive, liberal Democrats who will fight for the rights of families and workers. I will vote for candidates endorsed by workers' unions, the Progressive Party, and the Working Families Party. I'm unemployed, along with millions of other Americans, and I have many friends and neighbors who are unemployed too. I know people who've lost their jobs, 
not once, but two and three times in the past five years. Some of these people are losing their homes to foreclosure because they've lost their jobs. Right. So families with children are getting kicked out of their homes by the banks that we all bailed out with our tax dollars. Right. That's outrageous. Right. Mothers, mothers having to tell their kids, daddy just lost his job. And then three months later, having to tell their kids, we have to move out of our family home because daddy lost his job and mommy has asthma and high health care bills. These fathers and mothers are getting physically ill and psychologically depressed and they can't even afford health and mental health care to deal with it. This injustice, this inhumanity to families makes me so mad that I came here today to speak for those families. We, the unemployed and underemployed, are organizing here and all over America, just like they did back in the Great Depression. Remember, underemployed means you're working, but you're not getting paid a fair living family wage. And that's a huge number of Americans. So we're holding vigil every Wednesday at noon at City Hall until Election Day. We also have a monthly potluck for the unemployed at Southeast Uplift on the second Thursday of the month. And everyone is welcome to join us with food or not. The next potluck is Thursday, October 14th at noon. And we have flyers. Just ask me for the flyers and the details. So come join us. Let's build a movement so big that we can no longer be ignored. I just want to give a little bit of an update from uh, across the country because this is a national day of action. As Lori said earlier, over 100 actions across the country, um, many of them in places where it's sunny and warm and dry, <laughs> and uh, we're a little envious of them. But um, I just want to tell you about some one exciting action in San Francisco at uh, Senator Feinstein's office. Um, they've dropped a huge banner that reads, Senator Feinstein and Boxer, Jobs Crisis, Extend uh, TAN, TANF Emergency Fund Now. Um, and there's uh, just just having that little bit of a presence there has has uh, forced the building to be shut down by a, a, a huge a huge number of police. Thankfully, the police uh, today were a little bit uh, more hands off and are just observing from the from the sidelines. Maybe that maybe that is it, Brenda. That's good news. So this is exciting news um, that we have think actions going on across. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to ask people to get together so we could take a picture and put it on our Twitter account so people know that in Oregon we're doing the exact same thing. What's up there? Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, everybody can post it everywhere. Um, the next speaker we have is Bruce Ballantyne, a banquet worker at the, at the Hilton Hotel, a member of HERE Local 9, is going to talk to us about what uh, the jobs deficit and how cuts to Social Security are hurting hotel workers.